In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between interfaces and type aliases in TypeScript. They're pretty similar in a lot of ways, but there are a few small differences that it's good to be aware of. I'll tell you up front, I usually prefer type aliases. When I started learning TypeScript, I actually came in from kind of a more object-oriented background, and so I used a lot of interfaces, a lot of classes, but the more I've gotten comfortable with TypeScript, the more I've chosen to use types over interfaces. And we'll see a little bit more about why that is at the end of the video. We're going to start off really simple here and that is both interfaces and types can give you basic shapes. Obviously, this is the most common thing to do with an interface or a type is to just create a basic shape. As you can see here, we've got a video type as an interface and also as a type alias. These are exactly identical because TypeScript is structurally typed and so these are basically interchangeable types. Now, one thing these examples don't show, but let's actually add this in, is that both interfaces and type aliases can have functions. And of course, this could take some kind of an argument as well, and we can do the same thing down here for our type alias. All of this works just as you would expect. Now, one thing you might not expect is that both interfaces and type aliases can describe functions, not have function properties, but actually be function descriptions of themselves. So this is pretty common in types. You've probably seen this before where we can say our type schedule video here is a function that takes a video and a scheduled for date and then returns a promise of Boolean, right? And we can see the return here, obviously. You can also have an interface that describes a function signature. In this case, we just put the function signature right inside of our curly braces for the interface. We don't have any field name here. If we did have a field name, this would be kind of a different type of property, of course. But as it is like this, this schedule video one interface could be implemented by an actual function. I don't think this is super common syntax. I can't say that I've ever seen an interface like this in a code base that I've worked in. Usually if I'm seeing a function description, it's via a type alias, but you can do it. And if you choose to use interfaces for the rest of your type shapes, then maybe you'd wanna do this too. So those cover kind of the basic shapes that you can do in both interfaces and types. Now, one thing that you can do with type aliases, and it's kind of right there in the name of alias, is alias one type to another. So for example, I could say user ID equals string. And you might do this if you want to have a user ID type that is really just a string, but you want to add maybe kind of some extra semantic description there. Now, if you want to do this, the thing to keep in mind is that this extra information that you're adding is really just for you as the developer. TypeScript doesn't know anything about it. Let's say we've got a couple of type aliases here, user ID, product ID. These are both strings. And then we have some kind of function that can update a user and it takes a user ID as its argument. Now we've got a couple of variables here, a user ID, a product ID, and then a label, which is just a normal string. If I pass all three of these to update user, you can see that all three of these are passing just fine. There's no TypeScript errors happening at all here. Even though two of these kind of have a different type in our mind and a different alias, one's a product ID, one's a normal string, they're both still assignable to user ID. As you know, TypeScript is structurally typed, so all of these kind of boil down to the same thing, which is just a string. So you can do this if you want, and I don't think it's a bad idea, but know that this is not information for the TypeScript compiler, this is information for you. I think it's helpful when you look at a function signature to have user ID instead of just string because it gives you a little bit of extra information that maybe normally you would put in a code comment. Instead, the code itself describes what it does a little bit better. That is one of the other great use cases of type aliases. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that you can also use type aliases to create tuples, unions, and intersections. A tuple type like video upload here is just an alias to an array of a particular length with particular values inside of it. Of course, we've seen unions quite a bit on this channel, and so you can see send message detail here has a union of two particular types. And finally, send message job here is an intersection. And we've covered unions and intersections in a recent video, so if you you haven't seen that, definitely check those out if you aren't familiar with these shapes. Of course, the idea with an intersection here is we're kind of extending one type with some extra information. So we've got send message details, and then we're extending that with this state field here. Now, extend, of course, is an object-oriented keyword, which kind of brings us back to interfaces. So of course, we can extend interfaces as well. Let's look at an example of that. This is an interesting one, I think, because it reinforces the idea that TypeScript is structurally typed. You'll see what I mean here in a sec. So we've got an interface, user one, and then we have another interface here, admin one. And this is the way we can extend or intersect two shapes that are interfaces. We've got admin one extending user one, and then we're adding our type admin field here. So admin one extends user one means it's gonna have all of the same fields as user one, and we're adding type equals admin. Like we just saw, we can do this in types as well. So we have type and then admin two extends user two intersecting it with our new type of admin. What we can also do here 
is mix and match our interfaces and types. So remember, we've got user two here, which is a type alias. And then we have an interface here, admin three, which extends our type alias. And there's nothing wrong with this. We can extend it with type admin and we have our new admin three interface, which is gonna have name of string type of admin. And of course this works in the other direction. We've got admin four here, which takes user one. Remember user one is our interface and it takes user one and it intersects it with type admin. And so now we have a type here that has got both our name and type fields and we're mixing interfaces and types in the other direction. So you can see in a lot of situations, type aliases and interfaces are interchangeable. Now there is a case where these are not exactly interchangeable. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we've got user two here, which is a name of string or let's intersect it with something else. Let's say it could be a name of number. It doesn't really make sense, but for our use case here, it shows that we have a type that is a, a union of two things. Now, admin two here, which is a type alias of its own, using intersection to join user two with type admin, this works just fine. However, interfaces can't extend type aliases that are union types. And this kind of makes sense. If we hover over this, we can see an interface can only extend an object type or intersection of object types with statically known members. User two's members here are not statically known. What that means is any object that could be assigned the type user two doesn't necessarily have the exact same shape. We can't guarantee you what that shape will be. It could be one of two things. Could have a name as a string, could have a name as a number. And so interfaces can't extend something where they don't know what the shape of that incoming object might be. So for me, this is a big reason to use type aliases in a bunch of places because I lean pretty heavily on union types for a lot of my work. And so interfaces don't really fit into that too well. Now I mentioned that I came to TypeScript from an object-oriented background. And at that time, I chose intersections a lot because I wanted to implement them with classes. And so so here's an example of how we can do that in TypeScript. We've got a simple interface here that just describes a greet function, and then we can implement that in our user class here. So as you can see, this implements the greet class. Now, one of the things I love about this is that if we get this wrong for some reason, maybe, you know, we don't properly spell greet here, or maybe we forget to implement it, then TypeScript will warn us about this, of course. It says that it's incorrectly implemented the interface greeter. A typo is probably a bad example, but a more realistic scenario is we extend our interface with a new function like this, and now we can see in our class that it's no longer correctly implementing the interface. We know now that we need to add say hi, to this class. However, one thing I didn't realize when I was getting started with TypeScript is that you can create type aliases and then implement them with a class as well. So for example, if we change interface to type here and then we add our equal sign, this becomes a type alias and our class can still implement this type alias. Now, just like an interface cannot extend a union type, a class cannot implement a union type. So if we were to make this a union type, you can see that we'll get the same error here. We need statically known members. There's one more feature that we're gonna take a look at here, and this is interfaces only. And that is that interfaces are extendable or mergeable. So take a look at this. We've got an interface user, which has a name of string. We've got another interface user here, which has a created at date. So you might think that TypeScript would complain that we're defining user twice, but what it does is merge these multiple interface declarations together. So let's create a user U. And if we don't have any properties in it, we get an error of course, and we can see that it's missing the following properties, both name and created at. So if I add a name here, we're still getting an error. We're missing created at. So let's go ahead and add created at make this a new date and we can see that now TypeScript is happy about this. So this is a pretty interesting property of interfaces. Of course, if we were to change these to type aliases, you can see that we have some errors here. If I hover over the first one, duplicate identifier type, and of course, same thing with the second one. And you can even see that down here in our variable, created at does not exist in type user. So it's really only taking the first one into consideration. Now you might wonder where this type of thing would be useful in interfaces. One great example that I've seen in a code base is using this to create an interface that describes the entire API that this code base exposes. At the top level, we could create this empty API interface and then each of the modules inside that code base can describe its own piece of that API. At the end, you have an API interface that describes the entire API, but each module of the code is responsible for maintaining its own piece of the API declarations. So that was a quick run through of the features of type aliases and interfaces.
So now we're asking, which one should you be using? Well, of course, it really depends on your own conventions. If you're coming from an object-oriented background, using interfaces and classes can make it easy for you to quickly become productive in TypeScript. As you've seen in a lot of my videos, I prefer type aliases. Like I mentioned, I lean heavily on things like unions, which can't be done in interfaces. And so it makes sense for me to just choose type aliases all over the place. Of course, in this example we just looked at, if you want to create an interface that is extended through multiple places of your code base, then an interface is really your only option there. Other than that, it's up to you and your team to choose the conventions that you want to use. But I'd love to hear about those in the comments. If you have particular reasons you've chosen type aliases or interfaces, let us know. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.